This is a devlog for a game prototype I've been making the past couple weekends. In this game, all non-player characters will be controlled by ChatGPT, a language model trained by OpenAI. So I want this game to be like Pokemon, but with a unique twist. You can talk to every NPC and have natural language conversations with them. The initial prototype is still pretty rudimentary. So far, you can just walk around the overworld and talk to various characters. When you talk to them, a chat window pops up and they are able to respond to what you say. Each character will be given a bio and then play a specific role within the game world. ChatGPT does a surprisingly good job at staying in character and doing its best to act within the bounds of the character description provided. For example, Old Man Henry is a former businessman who now dreams of being the best monster trainer in the land. So none of this is dialogue I've written. This is all generated based on Henry's backstory and knowledge of the game world. Now, before I dive into the details, I know many of you are going to ask for the code, but I really do need to go back and clean it up. It's quite the mess. Despite that, I know most of you would rather have bad code than nothing, so I've put the GitHub link in the description below. If that's not worth a like and subscribe, I don't know what is. They really do help the channel out immensely, and I really appreciate it if you do. However, for the code to work, you will need to provide your own API key for OpenAI. So back to the game, how does this work so far? To try to make the conversation seamless, I added context information such as where the NPCs are in the environment, a description of the world, in this case the small island, and other game world information. This information supplements the user's inputted dialogue behind the scenes. So when I first talk to Henry, we can look into the web request to see what the initial prompt to Henry was. If I then respond, you can see how the information has changed. Basically, from ChatGPT's perspective, the character is playing a text-based adventure game, and the idea is that we have the game world that you're interacting with, which is then automatically communicated to ChatGPT. This way, the conversation with the characters remains realistic and dynamic within the context of the game. Now, when this actually starts to get interesting is when we turn this into a two-way relationship. So not only is the NPC character aware of the game world, but they can also take actions to change it. If we draw this out in a diagram, it might look something like this, where we have our game world, this is everything you interact with as the player. Then we have an additional layer called like the world state encoder, which takes what is happening in the game and encodes it into a text form that chat GPT can understand. Then we'd create a list of actions that the NPC character can pick from to decide what they want to do. This would be fed into the agent action layer, which would then have their character try to perform the relevant action. Currently within this prototype, actions are only triggered when in conversation with an NPC. And they have three options. One, to tell the player to follow you. Two, to say goodbye. Or three, to continue the current conversation. If they choose to tell the player to follow them, for example, the conversation ends and ChatGPT is prompted to pick from a list of known locations. The NPC is then updated to head to that target location by using the A star algorithm. You don't really need to know much about A star for now. It's just a commonly used pathing algorithm in video games to get characters to find the shortest distance to a target location while avoiding obstacles. There's a bit of a bug though where the character seems to pick this option a lot, and sometimes they pick to go to the same location they already are. But I think this definitely can be fixed. Just by better encoding the world state and by providing better, more relevant options as actions for the ChatGPT to pick. So while the system is still very basic, I can imagine it could be extended a lot and create some very interesting gameplay opportunities. Characters could block your path and it's up to you to convince them to move out of your way. You might be able to even trick an NPC into letting you borrow some money to cure your sick monster. Or imagine you start off with a rival with a robust AI system that is actively playing the game in parallel with you, the player. The rival could dynamically challenge the player and respond to their actions. This would add a whole new level of immersion and challenge to the game. Basically, the AI should be able to do nearly everything the player can do. The entire town would become this autonomous system that interacts with the player, but also with itself, establishing its own history through the events and actions taken by the NBCs and the player. Speaking of which, apparently that is not that unique of an idea since this paper just came out when I was editing this video where they basically simulated an entire town and the events within. It's actually pretty cool. 
Um, it's not a game you can play, but the characters all interact with each other. Kind of what I was just explaining. Definitely worth a read if that's something you find interesting and probably something I'll be looking more into detail in the coming week. There are a few other systems in work that I'll just briefly summarize as they all need to be further built out and we're just put in now to get this prototype working. Time information isn't based on the real time passing, but instead based on how many steps you've taken. This affects the prompt given to the NPC characters behind the scenes. For example, if I take 100 steps between conversations with Henry, the prompt message will say a few moments later, but if I take over 600 steps, the prompt says the next day. This helps give context to ChatGPT so that if a character asks you to follow them somewhere, but instead you go off and do a bunch of other stuff, when you eventually do return, the character will be aware of the time that has passed and will still be able to give a realistic response without breaking the immersion. Then, to enhance the believability of the game world, I've implemented a validation system that uses ChatGPT to rate the believability of the player's responses. This system rejects responses that don't fit within the context of the game world. The rating system has five levels, with one indicating a nonsensical response, up to five indicating a great response where the player is actively role-playing elements of the game. For example, if I talk to a character and just say random nonsense, we can have ChatGPT ignore the message. Based on how strict we want the roleplay to be, we can change what cutoff is for JetGPT rejecting the message. Next, one of the main limitations now is memory. For this prototype, I've just added it so that when ending the conversation, JetGPT summarizes what just happened. This is then fed into the prompt for starting the next conversation. However, this isn't a scalable solution. ChatGPT has a token limit. Your entire conversation, including the starting prompt and the responses, is limited to just about 4,000 words. As you can see, the starting prompt is already pretty big, and as you can have more conversations and more things occur that the world state encoder needs to encode, eventually we will hit this limit. But I also have some solutions around this, and in the past couple of weeks, people more clever than me have come up with even better solutions. So I think this is a roadblock that can be overcome. One last thing. All of the artwork you've seen so far for this game is from this free asset set on itch.io. I just wanted to say thank you to the artist and to this tutorial which helped me get started on doing a HTML web-based game. All the modified assets I made for this can be found on my GitHub and are free for you to use, but please support the original artist with a small donation if you can afford to do so. So there you have it, a basic overview of the features of this new game prototype. I haven't implemented a battle system yet, but I do have a unique twist on that as well that I think you guys might like. Anyway, I don't know, but if people think this is cool and I can keep working on it and maybe turn it into a real game or something. If you have any ideas on what direction you'd like me to take this, just let me know in the comments below. I'm definitely still open to new ideas at this early stage in development. Anyway, thank you for watching and keep on coding. Cheers.